Tom here from Lawrence Systems. We're going to talk about TP-Link Omada and Unify Software Defined Networking. So TP-Link is a newer competitor in the software defined networking market with their Omada. It's actually been around for a little while, but it hasn't been as popular as Unify. With their latest 4.0 version, they really ramped it up and made a system that looks dramatically like Unify. And of course, they're being opportunistic. There's been a few missteps in the Unify ecosystem, I guess you could say, that has angered some of the fan base, angered some of their customers, and said, hey, let's look at alternatives. And I went ahead and checked out the TP-Link, and I did a full review of the system when we initially got it, did some testing with it, and now a few weeks later of using it at my house, I'd say it's been very reliable for a home networking setup, with the exception of the firewall. Their firewall is as bad as Unify. We'll get into the details on that in a second. But I wanted to do a comparison of these two products and kind of lay them out side by side. Now, before we dive into all the details, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a sharp project, there's a hire us button up at the top. If you would like to just reach out and contact me, hit me up on Twitter or head over to our forums, great way to engage. Now, Let's first talk about software-defined networking and the way the two products line up. First, we're going to look at the Unify product line, and they offer a large series of switches and Wi-Fi access points. So there's quite a bit that's been around for a while in the Unify platform that all merges into it. And most everything that says Unify on it versus Ubiquity, the company name, is part of their system that works with their software-defined networking. And it's not too hard to find these devices. They were available on Amazon, and Unify's really been pushing for a direct sales model as of late. Then you have the Unify controller options, which is the Unify Dream Machine or the Dream Machine Pro. These are the integrated firewall and controller software and one device. And then they have some of the recommended things on here. And of course, they also have their cloud key, which is a hardware device to be able to manage the software defined networking on. Now, the Omada has something very similar. So if we go over to the Omada, we have a much more limited, as of right now, list of devices. And we have the AP660, 620, uh, 265, and that's really it. These top ones right here for a few indoor models. And then we have one outdoor model, the AC1200. Then we have just a couple different switches. So as of right now, here in... April of 2021, there are not a lot of options, but these are all the devices that are compatible on there. And like I said, I did a full review and I break these down in my other video. And they have two different firewall options. And like I said, they copied Unify to the point of making not so great firewalls. So let's actually dive into some of the features though that both of these have that are alike. Now you can, on both of these platforms, download the software defined network controller and host it yourself without any registration. Now, where the difference is, and this is where TP-Link really took advantage, if you get the OC200, OC300, which is the cloud controller, the hardware device from TP-Link that will host their software-defined networking, you do not have to register with the TP-Link at all with their cloud registration. With Unify, they made some changes here in 2021 that angered much of the community, as I alluded to, and specifically around forced registration. This is now part of the Dream Machine series, the the cloud keys, and it's just not something I think is necessary. I like it as an option if you want to use their cloud to be able to remotely manage this, but I don't think it should be necessary. But Unify you know, made that decision, and so this will, you know, split the market a little bit on that particular topic. But both Unify and TP-Link still offer their self-hosted version without forced registration. So I just want to make sure that part's clear because that does come up. They go, well, are they going to change it on the self-hosted version if you, you know, roll your own server? doesn't look like it. I don't think they would because they have a lot of people that are in my category, which is the IT and managed service provider space that are using these. Now, both of these allow for the hosting of clients controllers in our stack. So we have a server that we host all the Unify systems on. We have all the clients in a list. Unify makes this really, really easy to do with their controller. And of course, there's companies such as Hostify that Riley Chase put together that offers hosting of the controller software. So I think that market, they don't want to disrupt. They don't mind disrupting the end user market with Unify, but the other bigger markets that are the MSP market, and you know we've installed a lot of these at scale and have a lot of these systems that we manage. I don't think they're going to make changes to that, but hey, this is one of the reasons we keep an eye on new products. Now, Amada does have a similar system where you can do that type of hosting. I couldn't find anyone that really I know that's tested at a scale. I've seen some comments from people 
um, when I did the TP-Link review video, but I couldn't reach out to any of the other MSPs I know that we're talking about large scale installs, but a lot of people seemed happy with it. And my experience of testing it at my house is it held up really well. Now, a couple of things that these guys offer that's really cool is simple wireless management. These are some of the reasons these platforms are so popular. Now, for example, on the Unify side, this is what the wireless management looks like. We can define different wireless networks and this propagates to all the devices adopted. Switch over here to the Omada side, pretty much the same thing here. The Omada, I wish offered the dark mode. I left it on dark mode to easily distinguish between Ubiquiti and Omada. But other than that offering dark mode, when you start going through these settings, you realize they look very, very similar. Now let's look at the VLANs here at the Omada and you see I have one VLAN defined at my home that it was set up for testing. VLAN 123 shows the ID. We have the LAN, the main interface that I have set up on my house using the Omada. And pretty simple, when you define this, all the devices that are adopted in network get this VLAN information so you can apply it and apply it to each port. Go over here to the Unify. This is our office network. We have more VLANs to find, but essentially we have an extremely similar menuing system and it makes it really easy. So if I want to apply VLAN tag 50, we'll go over here to a device, we'll just hit device and we'll choose a switch and then just edit a port on the switch. And we can simply choose any of those defined VLANs that are in that list. Now let's look at how that works over at the Omada. We look at the switch, we go to ports, and we'll use a port not in use, hit edit. And there's our easy one, two, three VLAN. Really similar to the way both of them work side by side. So a lot of the decision becomes a little bit difficult because TP-Link did such a good copy job, I would say, because Unify had this, was popularized, this kind of easy pull down method that makes defining a VLAN easy, that makes it so you don't have to go and message each switch and make sure the configurations are tied together. As you adopt them into the network, they all just follow suit and have this option applied to every switch in your network. And I think this is a really great system. It does make for easy easy management. And of course, this makes for remote management. So you can have the controller at a separate location from the actual site where these are being managed. In our case, many of our clients are like this. So if we needed to look at a port, see if it's active, see what the stats are on that port, both of these softwares offer that same solution. Now, this is where there is a big variation though in how they adopt things onto the network. And it's unusual that for all the copying that TP-Link did, they didn't copy this feature. So right here, I've got a device plugged in to the TP-Link and it's on the same LAN as the TP-Link. So I have it on the 172 network. This is actually on the 172 network as well. So it sees it and ready for adoption. So all I have to do is go here and hit adopt and it'll adopt this into the network and become part of all the other devices on here. Now in Unify, the way that works, and we'll go over here to settings and we'll go to controller. In Unify, you would set this right here. So it says omada.lawrencesystem.com. No, this isn't public, publicly accessible. We set this up internally as a demo, but when we move it over to different networks that have access to it, it doesn't push the controller host name IP name. This is a variation from the way that it's done with Unify. With Unify, you set your controller and host name, and then when you adopt devices, and for example, when we adopt them here in our local controller, then we send them out in the field to a client, they're phoning home to the proper entry. The TP-Link chose not to do that. So even though they have a spot to define it, that isn't where you actually set it. You actually have to log into each device, such as a firewall or switch, and adopt them by putting in where the controller is, tell it to adopt. Now, before you do that, you have to log into these because each one of the TP-Link devices can be a standalone or can work with the controller software. This is also a variation from Unify, which Unify, if you buy one of their Wi-Fi access points or their firewalls, it only allows for adoption and their switches into their system to work. It doesn't have a standalone web interface, but because they do have a web interface, you roughly got to set it up. Just got to log in and create a username and password. Then you go over and go to the controller section in these and push the settings into the controller that tell it where the Omada controller is. And that's how you can adopt them when they're not on the same network. When they're on the same network, they can discover each other. But this is a little bit more tedious because I can set up 20 unifies, plug them all in the same network, hit adopt on all 20 of them and send them out in the field, whether they're firewalls, whether they're Unify access points or Unify switches. Mostly we don't use the firewalls. More on that in a moment. But that is a easy way to do it. Omada has kind of an easy way of going into each device, or you can use the Omada discovery tool, which only adopts their Wi-Fi units and point them so you could set it up. Uh, I found that software kind of 
buggy because it only works with Oracle Java, but I did test it and you can do it that way. And it does have a bulk option. So it's, it's okay. It does that. Now, related to that is figuring out all the ports that it used. I found the documentation absolutely lacking on TP-Link, but being that it's a newer product and not as mature as the Unify platform, I think that's just going to happen. Um, there's also the confusion because if you go backwards to their version three versus their version four software, there's some wild differences in the way it works. Unify has incrementally changed their system. And of course, now they have some of the newer interface that they're working on. But overall, there's a pretty longer path that they've had. So there's a lot more documentation for the Unify available on their website and a lot more details because, well, the products like it been around a lot longer. Now let's get to the firewall. This is where... TP-Link shouldn't have copied it all. I don't get it. They copied the firewall and they copied the problems that come with firewalls from Ubiquity. And the, the problems are just mind numbing to me in 2021 why you would do this. For example, let's set up a block of IPs on a WAN address. Yeah, they decided to copy that same flaw from Unify. We either uh, Unify for years has had requests and someone will probably point out in the comments that it's in beta right now a beta feature to allow you to have a block of IPs assigned to the WAN. I can't believe that's a beta feature on a company that claims to be enterprise or even business oriented at all, because for home users, yeah, you're probably only gonna have one IP on the WAN, but for any of the business users, this starts becoming a problem when you have, it, you know, just you want two or three IP addresses. Well, there's ways to do it, but there's not any official ways to assign them, but they do allow you a little bit different in TP-Link versus Unified to build multiple WAN ports on there. Now they do support failover, so I'll give them that, but the failover is, buggy to say the least. I haven't done much failover testing with TP-Link, but I'm going to go with it's still not great. It's not granular. It gives you very few options. It's kind of a you get what you get and there's very little control over it. The basicness of their firewalls is also related to VPNs. They just don't give you much in a way of VPNs or policy routing. So if you wanted to do site to site VPNs are kind of neat, but that's it. If you have two sites, both running the Unify or both running TP-Link, which I haven't tested, but TP-Link claims to support this. But when you have them together, what you end up with is the ability to say, hey, take this site and this site and have them talk to each other. It's actually a really neat feature I think Unify has, but it's a neat feature. It's not the killer app feature. And more people want better, you know, remote user VPN support and better support overall for remote user VPN. There's some variations between them, but both of them I wouldn't recommend to anyone that needs solid VPN support. Something like a PF Sense is going to handle that better. Something like Untangle is going to handle that better. So neither one of these companies I really think is good for the firewall. And by the way, for me taking these home and doing my testing, which that's why those other devices I don't have here, such as the aesthetically not pleasing large EAP 620 HD that I'm not sure why they made it so big. I have that at my house right now, but I do not have the firewall there because I just couldn't bring myself to use this firewall at my house with the lack of features. I need some of the VPN support to be able to get back into my house. And uh, those shortcomings mean to me, whether it's Unify or TP-Link, I wouldn't use either firewall. But some final decisions here for those of you wanting to know. Now, because I just don't have the track record with TP-Link, I don't know that I'd recommend this for a large scale business install. Maybe we'll try one out in some of the smaller businesses that are looking just for some basic access and see how it goes. I'm gonna keep running this in my house so I can keep gathering data because the experiments at my house of swapping everything and no one at my house even noticing went well. The range is good. I had no problem with the roaming between devices. So it worked as good as the Unify stuff that I was using at my house prior to moving it over to TP-Link. So for home users, I don't see any problem recommending this. Like this is stuff I would definitely recommend for a home user. Even the firewalls, I think for a home user who just says, I just need internet access and you know the kids want to be able to be online, I think TP-Link solid for that. And I've said the same about Unify. If you just want to get online, you don't care much about some of those other features like home user stuff, great. Now the home lab people, you're probably going to want a better firewall. You're, the home lab and business, of course, is going to be more interested in, you know, let's say whole home VPNs or policy routing or some of the more advanced things that you want to mess with in your home lab, the firewall is going to leave you disappointed from both of these companies. But the wireless access and the switches, I think are pretty reasonable, especially if you're on a budget for the home lab stuff. The overall doesn't feel quite as polished on the TP-Link and the offerings are a little bit 
narrower. They don't have as many 10 gig options, but the budget oriented nature of it, uh, and so far from what other people have told me overall, they've been reliable. And I think that's good. I just don't know anyone who's installed them at massive scale to see if there's problems or bugs in it. But a lot of the home lab people that I did talk to that I know have gone, yeah, I've had one for a while. It actually works pretty good. So I think that's a good recommendation over on the home lab side. The other advantage that is going to be with TP-Link is the fact that you can get some deals on Amazon, you can get fast shipping, and Unify, um, with them moving everything towards direct sales and away from Amazon, I feel the prices went up a little bit more than it used to be. So this can kind of be challenging. And Unify is not being favorable to resellers anymore like they were. Matter of fact, there's not a ton of resellers of the Unify equipment because if you are a large scale reseller of it, you know the margins are like really small on the devices. Unify is not much for discounts. But my overall on Unify, I mean, having deployed it at scale, having put a lot of these out there, we've found their wireless access points to be very, very reliable. We found their switches to be very reliable over time um, that we've got these installs. And this goes back years. I mean, we've finally replaced a couple of them from a client we installed back in 2013. The only reason we upgraded is because they did some building upgrades and wanted to get off the old 2.4 stuff we installed in 2013. Nothing wrong with the devices other than a couple LEDs were really dim or burned out. That was actually a known issue in some of the earlier models. They would keep working with the LED ring on those would be you know, not too bright or even not working at all. But the device itself worked perfectly fine. So those are my thoughts on this. I'll leave a link to the videos I've done on Unify. I have a whole playlist for that. And I'll leave a link to the TP-Link Omada that I did the review on and some of the hardware on there. But my overall thoughts on it, like I said, it seems pretty good hardware uh, on both sides on there. But firewalls, sorry, I'm going to have to drop both of them on there. So hopefully this helps if you're looking at building out uh, some of your gear in your home lab or thinking about it for business. And if you're someone who has and want to talk a little bit more in depth that, that from a business standpoint have used the multi-controller at scale, then that'd be great to talk to. And also security. If anyone can give me some issues with TP-Link or understand them better because there's still some questions I have, like having Telnet enabled and things like that. I don't find any flaws in it, but they also don't have a bug bounty program. So any of the security people I've reached out to so far since I, my initial review have no interest in really looking at it because they look at it as, you know, not a lot of value in it because it's kind of a home user thing. So they're not really looking to attack it. There's no bug bounty program. As opposed to Ubiquity, they do have a bug bounty program. So I've known some of them who have taken some real you know, hard looks at it. And I've talked about before some of the flaws in the adoption that were discovered from Unify, but it, it's not arbitrary. There's actually some security built into Unify and it's been vetted way more than TP-Link. Really not as clear on this, but I also don't see them incentivizing security researchers to poke up their stuff. So if you are a security researcher who has poked at it or interested in it, um, if I can give you remote access or, you know, help you out in that, uh, contact me, hit me up on Twitter, let me know. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a Sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly. So check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.